Hi everyone and welcome back to another Maya rigging tutorial. I'm Jason Baskin and in this video I'm going to describe the basic process for creating facial blend shapes. Blend shapes or morph targets are really handy because they allow us to deform a character based on a sculpted target. Sometimes we'll run up against limitations of how a character can be deformed using joints alone, especially in the face. And morph targets offer a really simple solution. So here you can see I have a character that's already been bound to a basic rig. You can see I've already created two morph targets for this character, a smile and a raised brow pose. And I've created these targets just by using Maya's sculpting tools like the soft modification tool and manipulating just the changing verts on the character. It's crucial that you start out with a base shape that's exactly identical to the mesh that was bound to the skeleton. And even though I've moved these meshes off to the side so that I can see them, if I zero out their transform values, you'll see that they sit exactly at the same location as the bind pose for the character. So you don't want to freeze the transformations on any of your morph targets or move the pivot points. And you also don't want to manipulate any vertices except for the ones that need to change. It's also extremely important that you do not change the topology of the mesh in any way that would renumber the vertices. So that means no extrusions, deleting of polys, appending new polys, splitting polys, nothing like that. Basically all you can do is move vertices around. In order to connect these targets to the original bound mesh, I'll select all of the completed targets one at a time holding down the shift key. And last, I'll shift select the bound character and then I'll go to the Create Deformers Blend Shape option in the Animation module. Usually I'll leave these settings alone, but if you've already attached your mesh to the skeleton, it's important that you make sure that the deformation order is set to front of chain. Maya will sometimes put the deformation in the right sequence anyway, but it's important to be aware of the deformation order, and I'll show you how to modify that later on in this video. Once the settings have been designated, just hit Apply, and you'll see that a new blend shape input appears associated with the original bound face. I'll close the blend shape window, and if I open that input, you see that both of my targets are now listed as inputs. If I select them, and then middle mouse drag in the viewport, you can see that I can drive the input values by middle mouse dragging. So because the brow geometry is separate from the face geometry, I'll need to connect that as well. I'll select the browse up morph target, then select my neutral brows and go back to the Create Deformers Blend Shape tool to create a second blend shape, this time driving just the eyebrows. It's easiest to have each mesh receive just a single blend shape input. So if you need additional morph targets for a part of the character, the simplest way is just to duplicate the bound mesh and you'll want to make sure that none of the targets are active when you do this because remember you want to duplicate the geometry in its neutral state. So you go to Edit Duplicate. If the mesh has been scanned like this one, you'll need to unlock it by selecting the channels, right-clicking, and choosing Unlock Selected. And then you can just move it off to the side so that you can work on it and give it a new name. So let's make a, a brow shape called Brows Down. And remember, these translation values don't affect the morph target in any way. So if I wanted to lower the brows, I'd actually have to go into Component Mode by right-clicking and choosing Vertex to sculpt the brow shape down. Or I could apply a deformer such as a lattice or cluster in order to achieve this shape. And with the morph target finished, I could add it to the previously created shape by selecting it, shift selecting the neutral shape, going to edit deformers, and under blend shape choose add options. Here you'll specify the name of the blend shape node. I've got a few in this scene, so the one I need to find is blend shape 113. And then click apply. And here we'll see that the new blend shape has been added to our list of morph targets. But if you're gradually building up your library of blend shapes, an easier approach might be to simply delete the original blend shape input, finish up all of your morph targets, and then create a new blend shape. So if I wanted to delete this old blend shape, I could type the word delete here in the command line and then enter the name of the blend shape node. This was blend shape 113. And then I could create a new blend shape by choosing all the morph targets and shift selecting my bound shape and go to create deformers blend shape. 
I mentioned earlier that the blend shape settings are actually important because they establish a proper deformation order for the mesh. And you can see that this mesh is actually behaving correctly. I can pose the character using the skeleton and also activate the blend shapes in the proper order. But if you haven't set this up correctly, you may see something else happen. For example, with the mesh selected, if I right click and choose inputs, all inputs, I can see a list of the deformers that are acting on this mesh. If this order is incorrect, you'll see that the character mesh will separate from the skeleton when the blend shape is activated. So if you're experiencing this problem, the solution is to select the mesh, right click, choose inputs, all inputs, and just make sure that the blend shape node is beneath the skin cluster in your list. Since my eyebrow mesh is separate from the face mesh, I'd like to drive the blend shape for the eyebrows based on the behavior of the face. To do that, I'm going to select the blend shape for the face here in the inputs and go to Window, General Editors, Connection Editor and hit Reload Left to make sure that the active blend shape is on the left side of the Connection Editor. Then I'll select the brows, find the blend shape input in the channel box, select it, and choose Reload Right. Finally, I'll expand the weight attributes for both blend shapes and connect the appropriate targets, the brows up for the face to the brows up for the brow mesh. Now when I activate the face mesh, it will automatically move the eyebrow mesh as well. In addition to accessing the blend shape weights here in the channel box, I can also adjust them by going to Window Animation Editors Blend Shape, where I'll see a keyable slider for each of my blend shapes. And this is pretty handy, but animators usually prefer to keyframe curves visible in the viewport rather than go to this special editor. There's a lot of different ways to set up facial controls, but one of the simpler options is to simply create a control curve and limit its translation values between a range of 0 and 1. Then connect those translation values to your blend shape weights. For example, I can go to the Create menu and choose Circle from the Nerves Primitives option. And this will create a new control at the origin. I'll zoom in on the control by hitting F on the keyboard and rename it Smile Control. Next I'll rotate the object 90 degrees in X and go to the Attribute Editor by hitting Control A on the keyboard. If I select the Transform node from the Attribute Editor, you'll see that there is an area where I can limit the movement of the object. I'll expand it and find the Translate section and limit the movement between a value of 0 and 1 along the Y axis. Then I'll return to the channel box, freeze its transformations by going to Modify Freeze Transformations, and I'll lock and hide all the attributes except for the Y translation attribute by selecting them, right mouse clicking, and choosing Lock and Hide Selected. So if I zoom out, you can see that this object now only moves in a limited range between 0 and 1 in the Y axis. In order to designate that range more clearly, I'll switch to the front view, turn on my grid, and create a square control curve around this object that indicates the range of movement. I'll just go back to create and choose the CV Curve Tool options with the one linear creation settings active. Holding down the X key, I'll draw a box around my curve, making use of grid snapping so that it's perfectly rectangular. If I turn grid display off again, it's easier to see the frame. I'll name this object Smile Frame, and to keep the animator from accidentally selecting it, I'll set its display mode to template by going back to the attribute editor, Control A, selecting the frame shape, and under Object Display, activate the template option. Next, I'll group these two objects together, and I'll call this the Smile Control Group. And back in the perspective view, I can move this object to a more convenient location for animation. And I could also scale or rotate the group so that it's in exactly the right orientation for the character. Finally, to connect the control to the blend shape, I'll select it, bring up my connection editor by going to Window General Editors Connection Editor, select my mesh and find the blend shape again, load it on the right, and left click on the Y translation value and then find the appropriate morph target and left click on that as well. So with just a few steps the animator has easy access to the morph targets for this character. So this is really just the tip of the iceberg for facial rigging 
But if you're interested in learning more, check out my other YouTube videos or my courses on lynda.com. Thanks for watching.